Hey everybody, um, I'm going to uh, do a really quick programming assignment, and then I'm going to talk about my day yesterday and my day today. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, um, I've been doing this uh, this uh, stuff with like defining functions, and it's been really easy. It's uh, super intuitive to me, and I don't know if this is just I don't know why they had this so late in the uh, sort of learning hierarchy. Because I feel like um, I don't know. I feel like uh, like dictionaries are might be more difficult than defining functions, but um, maybe it's important. But, I don't know. I actually have no idea. Why can you guys hear that? There we go. Sorry about that. That was uh, what was playing in my AirPods, and then I disconnected my AirPods, and it went to just my speaker audio, which pipes to you guys. Um, I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to come back once I have some thoughts. One, one moment. Okay, so as you may know, last night I went to a rave. Um, I talked about it. It was for Halloween, um, and it went pretty well. I left my house at um, 6... PM, um, and I got to the local strip mall at 6.40. Um, we left the local strip mall to go to the rave at 7.40. We got there at 8, 8.40 about. We got there at 8.40 and it started at nine. So we got there 20 minutes early. We got in pretty early. It kind of sucked because we showed up and it was just empty. Um, and it's actually it was actually a little crazy because I expected people to like eventually stop coming in, but it was crazy because just the longer the night went on, the more people showed up. Like it was just sort of a, a linear increase in the amount of people there. Um, I don't know, I, as something interesting, I will, so I was told they would have hearing protection by my buddy. They did not have hearing protection. I used my AirPods on noise canceling mode, which is fine. Uh, it, you know, Apple advertises them as, as a workable hearing protection for, uh, for music events. So, um, you know, it is, I don't, feel like my hearing is a lot worse. Um, I feel like it would be immediately noticeable if um, 
my hearing was worse afterwards, but maybe it wouldn't be in immediately noticeable, and that's how uh, insidious uh, hearing damage is. But, you know, anyway, the whole thing about raves, I feel like, is how loud the music is. Like, that's um, sort of the gimmick, right? The, the reason why you would go to a rave as opposed to just listening to electronic music at home um, is... Uh, how they play on very loud speakers, and it's kind of vibrating, right? And they're cool lights and stuff, right? It, it, like, But it like vibrates your body because the bass is very strong. Um, and so, uh, to sort of maximize this sort of uh, attraction, uh, to, uh, to sort of maximize what's unique about the rave experience, um, something they do is they par start playing like a song, like they start playing like Mo Bamba or something, right? And Mo Bamba is a, a great song, you know? Uh, but they start playing Mo Bamba, and they play the first like eight seconds, uh, and everybody's singing along because that's you know that's what you do when Mo Bamba comes on. Everybody's singing along to Mo Bamba, and it's crazy because um, then uh, they just sort of, they have to like turn it. They it, there's like a like a bass like a beat drop, and then they, it turns into just like some stupid electronic like 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 bro step music. Um, and I'm not complaining, right? But it just sucks because like it's because of the nature of the beast, like because you're at a rave and you, and you want it to uh, shake your body, they have to immediately like you turn all music that plays into this like sort of just very bassy sort of electronic sort of sounding thing. Um, and I'm okay with that. It's understandable, right? Um, but I think, you know, there is something to be said about just everybody singing along to Mo Baba because Mo Baba is a great song. Uh, and you know, like that is a great song and EXO Tour Life is a great song, and, you know, I just, I feel like maybe uh, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if they played it for more than, like, 10 seconds before they went into, like, just more bassy music. They just heard, they just played, like, the beginnings of songs, and that's all they did. Um, they also played, like, Carnival four times, um, but only uh, the, the part with the chanting, because I, presumably that's, it was actually just very strange. It was like, it, it's like they got all the parts that people know from the songs and then that's all they played. It makes me wonder if this is how raves always were or if this is sort of a, like a post TikTok sort of, um, sort of a post TikTok phenomena where they just play like nine seconds of songs that people know. It, it's, it's very odd. Um, I think a guy there, like, um, I don't know if this is a DJ's name, but it, it was just like people, like it was like, hey everybody, and it was just weird. It was like a sans serif font that was projected everywhere and just said people. And it was like just a lowercase. It was, was kind of silly. It was, it was silly looking. Anyway, so last night I was thinking of uh, EXO Tour Life because they were play They played it a couple times at the at the rave. And it just reminded me of the, just the incredible music video that um, EXO Tour Life has. And, and of course I can't play it here. I, I can, uh, uh, I don't know. Can I do like... I'm gonna do 1.75 speed, and I'm also gonna make it tiny. Um, but yeah, something crazy about the music video is it just has like these, just these Arabic subtitles at the bottom, and it's made by like the whole the whole song has these, um, and it's made by the song is directed by um, I believe don't quote me on this I believe it was the first music video directed by um, Off White, which was Virgil Abloh's sort of brand. Rest in peace, Virgil Abloh, the the homie and the goat. He, I, I don't know why I described him as a homie. I never knew him. I was very young when he was alive, but um, you know, um, it's just really interesting, and I think it's cool. Like I feel like, um, you know, at least when I'm making visual media, whenever I have something like text or something like sort of a subject to object uh, in the piece. I feel very inclined to have there be some sort of drop shadow or outline or something to make it stick out from the rest of the, um, to make it stick out from, like, the background. Uh, but I think it's kind of cool and even more subvert. Like, I think it's cool to have Arabic subtitles on something, like, uh, you know, say what you will. And maybe this is just uh, coming from my American sensibility, but I feel like if you have, you know, yellow Arabic subtitles at the bottom of the video, uh, your tip, you're probably not going to see a very uh, good video. It's prob it probably has some bad contents, right? And so I think not only is it kind of cool and subversive to have this uh, Arabic text at the bottom of the whole video, like it's some sort of like live leak thing, you know, that at least that's, that's where my mind goes. 
uh, but they also doesn't have any background, no drop shadow. They just have the text there. And I just think that's very cool um, because, you know, if I was doing it, I would want to put like a black box in the background or maybe like a shadow or something. But um, I just think it's very cool and inspiring how they how they just have the text at the bottom. Um, and I just I, I find that uh, cool. I, I think that's a cool thing they did. Um, but anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, we stayed there. So we got there at so it kind of started at nine, um, and then it, uh, we left it around one. Um, it ended at two, but like, I'm not wearing, we, you know, what, you know, <laughs> um, I, I wasn't under the, uh, the, the mindset that would make me want to be there for five hours, you know? So, uh, four was my max. We all kind of wanted to go. I was talking to my buddy about it. We kind of wanted to leave like an hour earlier than we did, but I was okay with how long we stayed. Uh, and then we went to Subway, um, and that was like bad. Um, there's like a meme. I'm going to turn it back on to where my face is illuminated. Um, there's this meme where it's like, um, hold on. Uh, wait, I, one moment. Okay, so there's this meme where it's like, you know, uh, Subway sucks, but you made the sandwich, you know? Uh, and so the implication is that uh, the people who say that Subway sucks are the people who uh, just construct bad sandwiches. They, they instruct the employees to make bad sandwiches. Um, and I kind of agreed with this vaguely. I work in a sandwich shop and people can make gross sandwiches if they like. Um, but, you know, I feel like all the base ingredients are so good that it's a little difficult to make like a gross tasting sandwich. Like it just tastes a bunch, it just, worst case scenario, it just kind of tastes like a bunch of really good ingredients kind of mixed together, you know? Um, so I always sort of agreed with this, um, but you know, being at the Subway it made me realize that like, maybe Subway does suck and it doesn't just depend on if you made the sandwich badly. Like I think I made a, you know, what would be considered a pretty tasty sandwich. Um, and it's just crazy because I ate it and it just, it just wasn't very good. Um, another thing is that there were like about four guys working there all together. And it was actually a little crazy because it, it kind of felt like it was like, like they had never made a sandwich before, like, or something like they had, ne it was like, it was like all three of them. It was their first day on the job. Um, and it was very crazy. Um, I don't know, they were just making the sandwiches very slowly, um, and, you know, when I was trying to get a drink, um, I, you know, I don't drink, I haven't drank soda in over a year, which I'm happy about. Since I lost my phone, I lost my little counter for how long it's been since I drank soda, so it's kind of an unknown. I don't know how long it's been, um, but it's been over a year, I believe, and, um, um, you know, but, you know, sometimes if I'm at a fast food place, I do want to get a non-soda, you know, type drink, like maybe a sugar-free lemonade or something. Um, and so I tried the lemonade. The lemonade was bad. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how you make bad lemonade, but uh, sometimes, you know, you order lemonade at a restaurant and it's bad lemonade. Like there's something wrong with it. Um, and there was something wrong with it. So I poured it out. Um, and it, there was actually this other guy going through the, a very similar thing to like, he just happened to come into Subway at the same time as our group. And I was in a group of uh, like five people, including me. No, no, five people excluding me. So uh, probably six people altogether, including me, or maybe seven. I don't, I don't really recall exactly, but um, this other guy just happened to come in at, at around the same time we came in. Um, and he was going through very similar trouble to me because he had also tried the lemonade. And so I started putting the lemonade. He's like, man, it's not good. And I was like, okay. And then I had a sip. And I was like, oh, you're right. So I poured it and he, he laughed because like, like he knew it was bad. And I, I didn't believe him uh, because... I am a, I am a freak who doesn't, uh, who doesn't adhere to the social contract. Um, but anyway, um, and who doesn't live in a society. I'm like the Joker. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, so, so, um, yeah, so the lemonade was bad. And so I had to have this like iced tea and it also wasn't good. Uh, so I just spent money on a drink for no reason. Um, and also like I had a bag of Lay's and that, like, it was just Lay's. I, I don't know why I grabbed that. Um, and the sandwich just wasn't very tasty. And I think it's because there were only bad ingredients at Subway. Um, and I just think that's cra like, it's crazy how they only have bad ingredients there. And it's impossible to make a good sandwich because all the ingredients are bad. It's just crazy. 
Um, so, you know, anyway, um, yeah, so, so, um, what? Um, so I had the sandwich. It was good. It was good enough to finish and eat, but it wasn't like, you know, exceptional or anything. And I feel like all the sandwiches that I have at my sandwich shop and my sandwich at the sandwich shop I work at are pretty exceptional. So it just sucks. Um, and then, yeah, then we took the bus. Uh, home to the strip mall. Uh, everybody thought that the bus stopped like pretty early, but the bus kept going, and I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Like the bus kind of stays on 24/7, um, and then we were able to take the bus home. And then I was able to walk home from um, uh, walk walk home to my friend's house from there, and then I walked home from his house. It was kind of weird walking home at 3 a.m. Um, I'm very used to walking home from school at like 10 to 10:30 uh, p.m., uh, but. Walking home at 3 a.m. is like an entirely sort of different beast. Um, it was sort of crazy. Like, it was weird. Um, I don't know. It's just, it feels like, it's a little spooky to have to like walk past people when you're walking home at 10.30. But I feel like, and maybe this is just because I'm a guy. Uh, like, I, you know, I'm a guy. Um, uh, but I feel like it's even like a little spookier to not walk past anybody on your way home. Like there's no cars driving past you and like there's nobody walking past you and it's very, just very strange. Um, and it feels like there's something wrong and that you're doing something wrong uh, the whole time. Um, and, but you know, I, I, evidently I got home sla safely and I ended up going to sleep at around 5 a.m. Um, and I woke up at noon uh, today. So <laughs> I walked on the treadmill for like two miles because I really didn't need to walk much because I walked home this morning. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it went pretty well though. Um, yeah. I hope everybody has a wonderful day and yeah, see you dude.